Hey guys, happy Monday again, right? You guys are so good to me today. Today's Monday, February 25th, 2019, almost the end of February. And I am show number four, but you can't miss out on this show because we have Dr. Lewis Vera with us, and I'm super excited to have him on. He's got a great story. I mean, how could you not like the title of the, and this is basically from his brain, not mine. Hey, Bill Moore, what's up, buddy? Let us know you can hear us and see us, by the way. Um, living my best karate life, that's sort of, I took that, but he wanted to be Dr. Lewis's karate life, or what was your thing your daughter came up <laughs> yeah, with? Dr. Lewis Vera's karate life. Yes, that was good, life. I liked it. <laughs> so um, I've never had anybody come on and talk about karate, I've never had that in a title, and I know that you have so much in your life and you've got a great story. Hey Jay, hey Joe. Uh, so we got a thumbs up, so we're good. Chris, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a million years. Um, so welcome to the show and welcome and thank you for putting up with this late time frame, which I know is kind of your time frame, right? Yes, yes. Uh, but I appreciate you doing it on a Monday and you're all right back there, Brian. Don't worry. We will not, we will not give you a hard time. He's got work to do. That's good. Good, good. So we're live and that's Brian in the back who makes all the good drinks. Hello. <coughs> so welcome my friend. Thank you. And we've got Joe in the background. Are we allowed to say that? <clears throat> Can you see us? See, here comes the, the coughing part. All right, so give us a little background on you. You know, they always like to know the origin story. Okay, all right. Well, I, uh, I was born in New Jersey. Um, Me originally. too. Where? Uh, Bergenfield. Bergenfield. Is that Bergen County? Yes. I yes. was born in Bergen County. Oh, my God. I was born Ridgewood. in Ridgewood. Ridgewood, yeah. I Ridgewood, lived in New Ramsey, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were in high school in the same kind of, uh, you know, uh, grouping with sports. I am sure that you were there long after, or long before <laughs> I know, after I left, no doubt in my mind. But yeah, Bergenfield, New Jersey, and Bergen County, and uh, I grew up there, went to school, did my undergrad there, my graduate work in New York. And uh, then moved down to Florida in about 2003. Why did you since. move here? Uh, we were looking at different areas, you know, um, looking at Washington, D.C., and anywhere that wasn't New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's fairness to that. First of all, it's too cold. Nobody yeah. wants to deal with the cold. Yeah, the weather was a big deal. So it's even if you grow up, people don't believe me, even if you're born there and you're, mm -hmm. you grow up there, it's still too cold. Like, I don't know a lot of people that love, love, love that ice cold. They like to visit it. You yeah. want to go to Colorado and ski, Utah. But if you just want to go to New Jersey and you love the cold, something's absolutely, you have a challenge. Yes. It's past my brain. But what did you want to do when you came here? Uh, just practice, you know. Um, well, talk about your grad, talk about your undergrad and your grad. So okay. here we go. So, but you, did you always, well, let's tell, tell them what you are and then we'll go back and figure uh, out um, oh, how you okay. got to be what you are. Well, I'm a, I'm an associate professor at Palmer College of Chiropractic and uh, I'm a diplomate and board certified chiropractic neurologist, electromyographer, and I practice in uh, part-time downtown Orlando and uh, I do karate as well. Okay, so we're gonna have to back up and try to catch all of that. All right, so when you were when you were growing up, what did you want to be? Did you know you wanted to be a chiropractor? This is always the part that tries to. Uh, actually, you know. no. I was supposed to play um, U.S. soccer. I was on the national team, and uh, oh, that. Yeah, so uh, that's what I was originally supposed to do. Um, actually, when I was at Rutgers, uh, Alexa Lalas, who's now a commentator, uh, was there on the squad, and uh, I was supposed to play for Rutgers. And last minute, there were a change of plans. All right, so you played soccer growing up. Is that how yes, you? Yes, okay, yes. so you wanted to, did you, oh, you love this. See, Shirley, we love you. Did She said, love these big smiles. I don't know, some, some people can't see that, so they're like, Ted, what did it say? Uh, you're young enough to know. Look how nice he's dressed today, too, right? <laughs> thank you, thank you. I mean, thank give you. me a run thank for you. my money. I think you got me beat today. Uh, but you didn't know what you, you wanted to be in sports. Did you yes. want to be a full-time athlete, like a professional athlete? Yes, yes, okay. that was intent. And so what, I, I didn't hear there, what was the transition? What was the turning point? Did you have an injury or did you just decide it wasn't going to work out? Um, I was splitting my time uh, with uh, karate and soccer, but mainly soccer, you know, and I'd uh, been on the national team and, you know, traveled the world. And then when I... When I saw the lifestyle from an American standpoint, how uh, the U.S. players were treated, um, I wasn't very comfortable with it. So I said, you know, um, I really enjoy and love this, but as a 
as a career career, you know, if I were maybe in a different country, for sure, but not in the U.S. at that time. That's interesting to me. So you had a you have a passion for it, but you didn't you didn't think that the career would pan out because of the way the Europeans are all around yes. the world. Yes. Interesting to yes. me. Yes. So what do you think about our current soccer? Um, and do we even call it soccer here? Is it really supposed to be called football? Yes, yes. Um, what do you think about our current city embracing Orlando City soccer? Are you oh. a fan? Are you involved? Oh, I, I'm not involved, but I think it's absolutely great. I think it's absolutely great. What I think the U.S. has done that's different around the world is in women's. You know, they have created a squad that's uh, uh, the best in the world. Multiple World Cup winners and uh, sure. very, very good. So, you know, props up to all of See, we got we got a shout out. Uh, so tell me how you got into chiro chiropractic. Chiropractic. Uh, chiropractic. Yes. Yes. Right. So I was. That's not something you normally go. Okay, I want to. Um, you know, I'm going to joke with you because I haven't been to one yet. <laughs> I don't want to crack bones. Uh -huh. uh, what What was your driving force to get into uh, to become a chiropractor? Um, I was pre-med at Rutgers, and uh, I was supposed to, you know, just go into medicine and. Um, I had a friend that introduced me into the profession and uh, to work as a CA. We had to do, while I was an undergraduate uh, uh, training at Rutgers, we had to do some clinical work, you know, to get accepted into graduate school. And she introduced me and I absolutely fell in love with it, you know, philosophy and uh, the practice and then decided that I didn't want to do general medicine, that I wanted to do chiropractic medicine. Had you had any, had you been treated by a chiropractor before? No, no, okay. no, no. So the way that she described it to you, you thought, mm -hmm. okay, I, I like this. I like the idea of it. Well, actually I did like the idea when she described <laughs> it. <laughs> All right, talk, talk about that. That's and the then, best part. And then um, when I was at the office, you know, um, working with them, I saw what they were doing and then I had... Uh, two episodes, you know, and they actually had treated me and resolved it. And I, I was very, very impressed. And that's what kind of changed my mind. That's the thing about, so I have not had it. We were talking about this before the show. I have not yeah. been to a chiropractor before and I'm not afraid of it. I just have not, I have not had the experience yet, but I have so many people in my life, so many people I really care about who love it and swear by it. But I think there's a lot of misinformation out there about yes going to a chiropractor. So when you, Ruben says, hello, gentlemen. Hey, Ruben. Uh, when you go to a chiropractor, the first thing I think about is my bones are gonna crack. Can you talk a little bit about the misinformation? Yeah. Because I feel like, because I don't even like to crack my knuckles. Yes. And maybe that's something psychosomatic on my part or, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> behind the scenes as to why. Yeah, it's just, it just a type of uh, I guess <coughs> inner manipulation that's done on the spine or the extremities. And it's a change in pressure in the joint. That's all it is. And you know, you have a, you have a good sense and feeling after. Uh, it's not addictive as some of the misinformations out there. But what would be addictive about it? You mean getting your, getting it? I think uh, people assume it's addictive <coughs> because uh, once they get treated, that they realize how beneficial it is and to continue. You know, and that uh, you have to go all the time. That's choice. You know, in terms of how you feel, in terms of uh, you know the treatment. Uh, you know, with a uh, chiropractic, but no, I think what I highly recommend is people try for themselves and, you know, learn, uh, you know, get information, but also that they go individually and then judge for themselves as opposed to what would, what would, what would be something that would be <clears throat> Jason? Does he, t already, does he take insurance and wears his office? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what would be something that somebody would go to you for? Like Jason's mentioning his back. Yes. Is it all about back issues? I mean, I get the sense that there's, it's more about, uh, there's, it's much, there's much more to it than just, I pulled my back, I need to go to a chiropractor. Uh, yes, there is, there is. Uh, there, there's different kind of, uh, one of the most common ones are neuromusculoskeletal complaints. Long, that's very long for nerve, muscle, or bone problems. But neck complaints, back complaints, headaches uh, are extremely responsive and do very, very well with chiropractic management. Uh, some other um, uh, practitioners also, you know, from a holistic standpoint, treat the whole body as well. So there's that involvement as well. And so what, what's the thought, what is the science behind it? Because mm 
So if I need my, if I, if I have back issues or neck issues and I mm. come to you, mm. what do you do? I'm really asking this. This is why I don't do any research now, you yeah. know, <laughs> what am I, what am I coming to you for? Mm -hmm. Am I coming for you to, you go, okay, so you've got this problem with the XYZ part of your back or XYZ part of your neck. Yes. And here's what I'm trained to do to try to uh, align is the word that I hear a lot. Yes. Yeah, so Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, the in terms of alignment, what happens is practitioners manipulate the spine and align it properly or restore motion, that proper motion within the spine, and that affects the nervous system. And then there's a whole cascade that you know uh, happens there after that. So that's a very kind of simplified version. And so the that. alignment part is important because something's been out of line. And of course, if it's mm -hmm. out of, if it's not in line, mm -hmm. it's probably not in a good spot. And so there's this whole, the science of it is, you've got to get it back to where it needs to be in order for the whole system to work. Yes, I mean, you can use alignment or, you know, um, um, joint restrictions or, Probably what's better is a healthy spine, you know, healthy to spine. keep the spine healthy and functioning as it should and then with the nervous system functioning optimally. And how did you go from, and I have one last question, do you, you do you, when you do practice, because you said you, you're part-time downtown. Yes. Do, and we'll talk about being a professor as yes. well. Yes. Uh, do you use, do you do it manually or self? Because there's new, there's machines now that I hear yes. about. Oh yeah, yes, there, there's also equipment that you can use, uh, instrument assisted manipulation, uh, but I would say the vast majority of practitioners uh, uh, use their hands, That's you know, awesome. in terms of manipulation. All right, so how did you go from doing to become, you want to become a chiropractor, yeah. you are, and now you want to teach. Oh yes. <laughs> So what's, um, because that's a big leap, because a yes. lot of people when you get in, uh, you obviously gone to school for a very long time to make sure that you are great at your specialty and that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, but then to go out and decide, okay, I want to be a teacher, what was the, what was the thought process there? Well, I always did uh, part-time teaching, postgraduate teaching, um, and then um, I was, I practiced in downtown, solely downtown Orlando full-time for at least 10 years. And then an opportunity arose uh, with actually one of my former professors at the university. And he said, hey, an opening that op has opened, uh, would you be interested, interest, interested in teaching full time? And um, I said, oh, wow, you know, that, that's a possibility. So um, I applied for the position um, and uh, was accepted. And I said, oh, let me do a career change. So it is a career change, you know, from well, that of a clinician yes, going to educator. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so do you, do you, does the part-time part help kind of feed that clinician side. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, right? Yes. So you don't want to give it, a, you don't want to completely leave. Yes, correct. Because uh, you still love what you do. You yes. still love, he, I mean, it's basically healing people or, that's my words, not his. I mean, I don't think he's allowed to say that, but I am. It's my show and I'm not a clinician. Uh, but you're healing people. You're helping people get better. You're easing their pain. You're easing whatever they're going through with your training. And now you're teaching other people to do it. Yes, I, I mean, I love everything that I do. I'm very fortunate. I love teaching, I love uh, being a clinician, and I, I love the sport you know, that I'm involved in as well. Yeah, so let's talk about, so mm -hmm. living my best karate life, or living, <laughs> well, your, your daughter had it great, but talk about karate, because honestly, yes. uh, I was asking you earlier, we, we actually were chatting about, and you were telling me about training. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm listening to Lewis talk about this, I'm like, I had to ask him, what do you mean you train for karate? Now don't, I'm not a sports person, but I was fascinated by the fact that you, there's a lot of training involved. You're actually talking about your daughter who's involved. Yes, yes. Um, and so talk about how did you get involved? I get soccer, right? So yes. that, how did you get involved in karate? Oh, okay. So, so give us a little history on that. So essentially when I was uh, nine years old, my uh, father passed away from pancreatic cancer. So, uh, being a single mother, my mother was very, very worried about me in terms of having a father figure in my life. So, uh, she basically took me to my instructor, uh, Shihan Kinane Winterfield, and said, um, here, take him and make him a man and, you know, teach him, you know, how to take care of himself. And uh, for 34 years now, I've been uh, his student. Wow. Yeah, so he's still my instructor, and we, <clears throat> I just saw him for a reunion a few weeks ago. I hadn't seen him in 16 years. But I'm still under his guidance through, you know, videos and internet and teleconferencing. Isn't that awesome in this day and yeah. age you can so, do that? So that was, you know, that involvement. I've been involved since then. And, you know, uh, very luckily, uh, my daughter, 
Uh, we introduced her when she was uh, three years of age to her first lesson, and um, she just had the one lesson and never returned. And then uh, we went to some of the high profile events uh, on ESPN and US Open, and I brought her along and she met all the athletes and said, Dad, you know, I want to do this. So That's she's been so doing cool. it for now two years and she's very involved and doing and really she's well. She's nine? Yes. She's nine. <clears throat> yes. Now, when you first went, did you, like your daughter, did you have the interest immediately, or you're like, oh my God, I'm just gonna do this to appease mom? I think mar martial arts, is that even the correct yes, terminology? Yes, yes. So martial arts, I think there's this uh, perception that you have to be incredibly disciplined, which you should be for pretty much anything you do, but mm -hmm. it's got that, um, th there's, there's a discipline to it and a respect in martial arts. Can you talk a little bit about that and how did you respond to that mm -hmm. as being like, mom, here you go, you figure this out. I don't wanna do this anymore. Maybe I don't, I'm not, I'm not capable right now with what we have going through. Well, I think, you know, I, I did want to do it, you know, uh, that was something that I wasn't forced to do, it was something that I had an interest in. But in terms of the discipline, um, you know, martial arts, the uh, big misconception is about, you know, uh, you know, violence or combat, but it's actually about perfection of human beings and character, making better people. So uh, many people learn, you know, the discipline after being involved in it, and uh, I think in a very positive way, you know, um, so it makes better people. I feel like, so my, my son had an interesting experience with it, and he initially didn't find the right person. So I think yeah. with the instructor, uh, in anything, it was super important for him to find the right person. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be, so I think that, you know, there's a lot of karate schools, and why karate? That's one thing I wanna ask. Is that just because that's the one your mom found? Because that was the one that was closest. That was the closest to, <laughs> so I mean, I love that kind of story because, there could be this whole little deep thing about, okay, no, your mother no, researched it. And, no. no, but it, it was the closest, but what a blessing that it was the right one for you. Yes, there are different styles. There's uh, karate, taekwondo, kung fu, there's MMA now. We were actually were invited to the very first MMA, you know, um, in the 90s when that came about. Um, so there are different types, but I mean, uh, there, martial arts is a general term for all the disciplines together. Right. So not just karate, but any type of uh, discipline that falls within the arts is very good. And like you said, not, there's not always a perfect fit for each school. So just, you know, you could check a few different schools and eventually there should be one that's compatible. What do you tell people who, want, who have an interest or maybe they want their kids to be involved? Um, I've got a friend who still does it, Roy Reed. I'm not exactly sure what he does. Sorry, Roy. I think it's Taekwondo, Taekwondo. Uh, but it's martial arts and he's still, he's my age yes. or older. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Roy. Uh, but I feel like that is, it's such an important part of his being. So if somebody wants to get their, get involved or get their child involved, what's the commitment? What, what do you, and do you instruct in that too? Or, yes. okay, so yes. talk a little bit about that. So uh, my recommendation is, uh, you know, uh, the spiritual, the mental, the physical uh, embodiment of it, you know, in terms of development. And also it's a framework for their academic career in the future. I mean, that's what trained me for discipline in order for me to, to you know, to reach graduate school and to complete graduate school, <clears throat> uh, to learn how to learn. Um, and it's for everybody. I mean, you know, I, I, we were just discussing before, I, I know somebody who has been uh, practicing for 72 years. You know? So um, it's, it's absolutely <coughs> positive, it's great discipline, and uh, many say it, many, it's a lifelong commitment. And people, when they hear commitment, they get kind of a little bit scared or frightened about that, but it's a commitment in a very good way. Um, I feel that my commitment now is given back to what's been given to me throughout the years. Uh, it's not required, but I, I devote my time and, you know, uh, I feel it's very, very important to develop, you know, the uh, upcoming athletes, you know, and have the opportunities that, you know, I had before in the past. Well, I think for a lot of people, I'm going to imagine that there's this uh, structure that they may not have anywhere else. And so that structure yeah. allows you to, the discipline, the structure, uh, puts you in a place where it helps you like you, like, uh, Lewis said it helps you with the other things that you're trying to deal with in your life or to the other uh, uh, goals that you want to reach. It teaches you this fundamental uh, basic foundation of discipline and structure that a lot of times, um, especially kids, just don't have. It's very yes. difficult to find in this day and age. 
that you talk about the spiritual part. So obviously I'm gonna tell you, and I'm, I'm saying this in a very respectful way, when I think of anything martial arts, my mind immediately goes to Karate Kid. Mm -hmm. And I think if everybody's not Mr. Yamaguchi, <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna learn from them. But that's not necessarily the true, because you're, you're obviously not Asian. Um, and so, you still are a teacher, an instructor, and have a passion for it. Um, so what's the spiritual part of it? What's, why is that an important part? Um, it's extremely important. In my opinion, it's one of the, uh, in terms of uh, body, mind, and spirit, it's the one that is most difficult to develop and uh, takes the most time. You know, why is um, that? And before you get to it, Roy Reed just popped on the one I was just yeah. talking about. Roy, you have to listen to the show if you didn't hear it earlier. Roy does Taekwondo, oh, I'm gonna okay. say, yeah. uh, for a very long time. Um, I think because um, it's uh, it's wisdom, you know, and uh, taking in knowledge <clears throat> and experience, and you know, integrating everything together and digesting it and maturing. And uh, you can see that with young athletes, you know, that are very physical, but they, they lack the spiritual, you know, component. Uh, so when you have accumulation of all three together, that's like highest point, most kind of enlightenment. And that's what, uh, you know, you're trying to reach within the arts. But uh, the spiritual is uh, most of the, in, in terms of the higher level athletics, the individuals that I'm training and I'm involved with, um, these are multiple world champions, international competitors. Um, it's it's a spiritual component that they're looking for in training. The physical is already done. You right. know, that's already taken care of. It's more it's spiritual. Does the training. spiritual part obviously does it help um, hone the craft, the physical part of it? Um, is that I mean it's got to be integral. Everything seems to be uh, where it meshes all together, and one component isn't really good without the other. Yes, yes, and that's where you kind of you know see the highest level where the three are integrated and they've all reached, you know, the highest point. Um, but usually it's a spirit that's the hardest, the spiritual mental discipline, that's the hardest to attain, you know, from all of those. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for that, that final edge, you know, to kind of balance them out. And just so I understand, there's black belt, yes. right? But there's a lot of belts up that go, that start, there's a starting belt. Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the thought process behind or what's the history behind? Belts. Why was that important? I was. Uh, I'll let you explain. Um, well, belts actually originally weren't used. They were actually adopted um, by I think it was uh, by judo, you know, um, in terms of the ranking system. Um, so you have from white to black belt. Black belt in the martial arts is not a mastery level. It's just a basic instructor level. It just means you learn the basics, and it's just the beginning. You know, many people think. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, many people. Because you know, oh, somebody says they're a black belt in karate, they throw that around yeah. at a bar, <laughs> um, and so now I know that doesn't mean any. No, well, it means yeah. something, yeah. but yeah. it doesn't mean what I think it means. Yeah, it's not mastery. It's you know just uh, um, basically knowing the basics. Uh, actually, instructor level, most uh, um, most uh, arts uh, they require third degree and above. So there's degrees also thereafter. And in Japanese, they you know they do it through the Japanese language, shodan, nidan, sandan. Um, so there's anywhere from one to five or one to ten. It varies for each style. Uh, my style there's up to ten. Uh, my instructor being uh, Junan, which is ten, and uh, myself Godan, which is fifth. Um, so it's different, but black belt's just a basic, you know, just learning the basics, and then usually third degree and above is when you can be involved with teaching, and then after like third or fifth, it's more spiritual you know, involvement in terms of maturity when you get, when you go through the promotion system. See, I learned something, <laughs> Lewis. I did not know that. I'm glad I asked. The other thing that I'm always, I'm like, okay, so if you can uh, break the board with your foot or your head or your hand, <laughs> then you have an XYZ belt or degree. Can you explain a little bit about that? Because that's what I see. This is, yes. I'm just telling you yeah. what people normally yeah, would perceive. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's for focus and concentration, you know, wood, um, bricks and glass and different things like that. But I, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's just something that's done in terms of spiritual training. <laughs> I would say it's probably minimal. It's probably to be impressive, you know, in terms of, um, you know, what you're doing, which is actually not the goal of martial arts in general. Correct. But I mean, I see that that's a physical uh, representation of a level you might have made or where your brain is. Because yeah. you have to have some sort of 
focus. And I have to ask because this is my thought process. It's kind of like wrestling. None of my wrestling friends be mad. Um, is the is the board partially broken before you kick it? It shouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> no, and I mean not. that in a way because I'm like, how did they do that? <laughs> Whether it is or not, I don't know, but it shouldn't be. It should it not should be, be. Yes, people. It should, it should not be. be. Yes, you know. uh, do you do any, um, do, when you have people come in, do you take a large class? Is it more difficult? Uh, are you teaching, and I don't know your instruction yes. uh, from karate, Is are you individual instructing because of their level, or are you taking a large class? Because a lot of people... You know, martial arts has gotten to be where there's buses now and people are being bussed in and yeah. kids are being bussed in after school. Um, are they still able to get that uh, spiritual level, that physical level in large classes? And is that, hey, Daniel, what's up, buddy? Um, or are you, do you focus primarily on maybe one or two? I do both, but I focus primarily on one or two because I'm kind of dealing with the athletes that are, you know, uh, <clears throat> had world titles. They're, you know, trying to reach very, very high level and beyond. They're already, they're already up there, but they're usually trying to reach some sort of world title. Um, That's so a big time that those, you're working yeah. with that. And a lot of them do choreography. My daughter's instructor, uh, he's done all the work in terms of Hollywood for uh, the Avengers and um, Black Panther and all that. Wow. So, you know, so these individuals, what they do is they go into, uh, they go into the movie industry and they do choreography. And, um, you know, they branch out that way. So the choreography, by the way, if you're listening, choreography doesn't necessarily mean dance. These are the things where you see people have fights, right? Yes, and they're yes. moving, and so that they don't kill each other with the swords and the things that they have. They have to actually choreograph the fights and the fight scenes and the, the different things that are going on in the movie. So this is a very physical thing. Uh, that you see so it's not just the dance moves nothing against the dance moves, but choreography is not just dance So where do you want to where's your career in karate going? Do you want to do you want to be the world champion? And you might already be because this is what the TED show is all about yes. not doing research um, Do you want to be a, a world? Um, is it World Cup? What do you have? Tell me um, what karate yeah, is. Yeah, there's a, uh, well, I'm the current world champion. See? <laughs> I thought I read that, and so I'm glad. I thought Joe was going to come over and flick me in the head if I didn't get that, but I had some yeah. kind of memory. Yeah, for Ruko. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that's a lot, world Thank champion. Thank you. So how do you, what is the level you have to go through? How many people do you have to, is defeat the right word? Um, maybe it's to, you know, complete or, you know, uh, surpass. Um, surpass, it, it depends, I yeah. like that. That's very positive. <laughs> it, uh, it depends, you know, the world championships this year in, uh, for WUCA were in Italy. So uh, the U.S. team, there were, um, there were nine of us and we all flew to Italy in uh, Lignano, Italy, with a stop at Portugal. And uh, <clears throat> we competed there for a few days and, uh, and then came back with quite a few medals. So this was actually my second world title. Um, I had one last year too uh, under another organization, um, WKC. And uh, you know, it's, it's very exciting. Uh, but you know, I, I didn't want to do this. I did it because of my daughter. Uh, she wanted me to continue training because of her. I wanted to retire. I'm getting old like, for this sport, you know? <laughs> You're getting old. <laughs> you know, like uh, these young athletes, they're, they're, they're at the you know, height of their careers, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's hard, you know, physically. You so you're going to be know. Mr. Yamaguchi for someone? Well, I'm for gonna, karate? Yeah, I'm going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of retirement. Teach them how to do the stand. That's thank actually you. awesome. Congratulations. Thank I you, think thank that's you. amazing. Thank you. See, we have a world champion with us. And I like that surpass is such a better word mm -hmm. than defeat. Oh, yeah, and I like that so much. All right, so we're gonna, Joe, have I missed anything? No, you Okay. Um, we're gonna share all of Lewis's contact information. You can reach out to him about karate. You can reach out to him about chiropractic practices. I'm terrible at this. I thought it was chiropractic. 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 Yes. Here you go. This is why Ted Bogart is doing the show and why he's a doctor. Um, and I, you can reach out to him for anything. Obviously, he's an open book. Um, and so we'll share that after the show. Anything you want to share with them before we head out? Uh, no, thank you for having me on the show. And, uh, you know, you said parting with some words of wisdom. And uh, uh, with uh, Mahatma Gandhi would be um, to um, impart 
like, oh God, I can't believe I forgot this. Get right. nervous on this show. Told you, you don't have uh, to oh, cure be the, be the change you wish to see in the world. I That's it. it. Be the change. Be the change you wish to see in the world by Mahatma Gandhi. You're very gracious and very humble, oh, which thank you. Thank I appreciate you. and I have, I am 100% sure that comes from um, a lot of it, must, some of it must come from the spiritual training uh, and the spiritual background and all of the stuff that you do with mm -hmm. karate. So uh, you can feel it here if you don't feel it on that end. Very gracious. Thank you for being on, Lewis. I appreciate you. Joe, thanks for introducing me to him. She's off in the corner. Um, reach out to him, please. I mean, he's a wealth of information. And if you have a child or you are interested in getting involved, it, all it takes is a quick little message on Facebook um, or reach out to me and I'll give you his email and contact information. Um, but you've been a joy. Thanks for oh, being thank on. You. See, thank it wasn't you. that thank bad, you. right? No, it was great. You did it was fantastic. Great. That was so <laughs> fascinating. I learned so much today. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you for sticking with us for shows today. You guys were awesome. Mwah. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys.